Welcome to Open to Be Agile, podcast episode four, Losing Cabin Pressure. Make sure to secure your mask before helping others. In the great words of the modern day philosophers, the Rolling Stones, you can't always get what you want, but if you try sometime, you just might find you get what you need. As you can see, I'm not a very good singer. But these words stand true for this episode. We may face some very challenging situations. And in those situations, as leaders, we have choices. As leaders, people who follow us or observe us tend to model the feelings, emotions, and responses we have as leaders. We can act positively or negatively. We can cast optimism or we could cast doubt. We could create toxicity, or we can upwell a strong and positive movement yielding positive and great results. An avalanche starts with just the smallest sound wave. A raging inferno starts with just a tiny spark. Miles of ripples start with just the drop of a small pebble into a lake. Small starts can produce large impacts. You or I stand at the capability on the forefront of that small start. We can provide the initial direction of the type of results that start shall produce. I ask, what is the nature of the small start you shall produce? You'll never find happiness looking for it. It's not something you find outside of you. It's something that happens inside of you. That quote by John Gordon. I want you to think about that quote. As we go through this episode, try to leave your work troubles behind for a moment. Open your mind to good, positive vibe, positive intense. Put yourself in a state of Zen for the moment. Absorb the words of this podcast. And when this episode is over, think, how can you turn pressure into diamonds from what used to be a lump of coal. When this episode is over, go be that small spark and leader standing full of positive intentions and a rejuvenated mindset that your people need. They depend on you. They have faith in you. We have faith in you. And you could bring forward an avalanche of results. Welcome to Open to Be Agile, the podcast. Have a couple really good co-hosts with me today from Coaching Agile Journeys, Lori Townsend and Kristen Hernandez. I'm going to get to them in just a second, but this episode's going to be pretty fun. Titled it Losing Cabin Pressure, and I'll get to that in a second, but just to put it this way, it's a journey. We're all on a journey. That's why we co- called it Coaching Agile Journeys. No matter what the journey I firmly believe that the journey ends up starting with you. Now to get back to the losing cabin pressure analogy, I love the airplane security briefing analogy. When you get on any airplane and there's a loss of cabin pressure and a mask drops out and the flight attendant says, if you are responsible for any dependence, first securely fasten the mask to yourself before helping others. That stands so true in the world that we live in, whether it's our families, whether it's in business, no matter what we do, we have to get our head straight and actually embody ourselves, fix ourselves, clear ourselves up so that we can help others. We so tend to overlook this in this world that we live in with and work in with interactions, collaborations, empowerment, team above I, But at the end of the day, you got to focus on you too. The better you are and the more capable you are of helping people out and being a role model and being a leader, it's only going to help foster like really great relationships. So we want to explore this in this series. It's going to be about you. How do you wear that mask? How do you embody the role model of this movement? And I'm going to split this into two parts. So we're going to have a lot of fun with this. The first part is just going to be we're in in an imperfect, agile world. Wherever we go, it's probably 90% chance that 
we're just going to hit obstacles. It's not going to be what the manual said it's going to be. And we always come up short of expectation because we're expecting something so much better than it is. But when the world starts falling apart, what do we do? How can we still get results? How can we be good leaders? How can we deal with really difficult bosses? Then the second part's going to be a true evaluation of your ability to be agile. Well, we don't just do agile. We have to be agile. Well, I think we as agilists need to role model our, our ability to be agile. Do we eat our own dog food? And how honest are we at assessing and being able to look in the mirror and say, how am I projecting myself as an agilist? And what kind of a message am I sending to the people around me? And am I being honest about it or am I lying to myself? And there, there's a different perception. How do we fix that is going to be part two. So with this one, coming back to part one, where we're at now, I'll read this brief little synopsis I put together and then I'll let Lori say hi, and then I'll move over and let one of our other awesome leaders, Kristen, introduce herself. So part one, rarely are we injected into a place where Agile Utopia exists, and we could just stroll along smiling peacefully and just be in textbook heaven. The reality is we all wish to have this in some cases. Our expectations are that maybe the next place we're going to is going to be better than the last. I'm going to seek green pastures. What happens is we hit obstacles there too. We hit challenges and roadblocks impede agile health at every turn. We all go through it. Very few people work in an agile utopia. And part of agile is the continuous improvement never stops. So even if we are in an agile utopia, we will still face problems and challenges. We meet people who are not trained agilists, but will just take command and impose some faux agile. Like we're going to do it this way. I know the best way to do it and kind of downplaying the, the main expert agilist expertise. So whatever we do, you know, there, there's even sabotage experts that are just anti-agile. So all these challenges face us. And what we're gonna get into today is, what kind of tools does Jeff and Kristen and Lori have in our toolbox? What prepares us as agilists to make the most out of really bad situations? And how can we rejuvenate the mind and maybe take a fresh approach? So that's kind of my intro for today. Uh, Lori, if you want to say hi, it's great to have you back again as a co-host. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, so happy to be here with, with Jeff and Kristen today. I'm so excited to talk about this topic. So um, glad to be here. Thanks. Awesome. And Kristen, please introduce yourself. This is the first everybody's getting exposure to one of our other leaders. This is awesome. Yeah, um, I feel really lucky to be part of Coaching Agile Journeys. I was following Coaching Agile Journeys as a participant in meetings for a while and then finally got to be a co-host with an amazing team. So I'm excited about that. And I'm super excited about the topic today because it actually lines up with a book that I'm reading right now. So I have a little tidbit to add from the book. So That's exciting. I, I can't wait to hear that. I'm, I'm not going to delay much longer. So I'll, I'll get into this, and, and really, the mask's falling out, we're, we're in the airplane, and now we have to prepare ourselves so that we can be in better shape to help other people. We've inadvertently, in some way, signed up to lead change. I, I, I think a lot of people, as they get into this, where they go and they take a, take a certification, what they don't understand is, you're going to be put in a situation where you're going to be a change agent not just a servant leader, not just someone who's doing textbook scrum, but you're going to have to help lead people through change as an agile leader. You're going to have to, there's those uh, matrices of mentor, coach, or teach. Some, in some cases, you have to actually make very quick decisions. So I wanted to explore what are some things to help us breathe oxygen out of that mask when we, when we place that mask on our face and, and help rejuvenate our mind. What are some of the tools that we use that we constantly use in our day-to-day -day life that when things just start falling apart or we face some, some troubles or, or turbulence, what do we do to help others out, keep positive, and get results. And hopefully, as the audience listens to this, 
they're able to take and jot down some notes and go, cool, I didn't know that, or let me try that. And, and whatever they do and they listen to this, I'd love for the audience to be able to take and apply this in, in their regular everyday atmosphere and be able to tweet us or, or reach out to us on, on email or LinkedIn or through coachingagilejourneys.com and say, check this out. I used what you guys said and, and this, this was the results that I was able to get. And, and maybe we'll bring those results back here to one of our future podcasts and let it, all of our other listeners hear the, the difference that's, that's being made out there. Kristen, you're, you're new with us. I'll, I'll let you start. What are some tips and tools that you use? So, so the newest tip I'm not going to share first because then I'd be giving it all away, right? I, I, one of the things that I really rely on is listening to audiobooks and podcasts at, to start my day. So when I used to work away from home, because now I work from home, but when I worked away from home on my drive, I would listen to various things. And I was in an environment that was quite challenging, very um, command and control, top-down environment. And I would find that I would do something in the Agile community. I'd have all of this energy. I'd go in, you know, like I had a lean coffee. I'd get in there and people would actually comment on the energy that I was bringing. And then a few days would go by and that it would diminish a little bit each day. And then I found podcasts and audiobooks and started listening to those. And usually like there were things like Creativity Inc. or Seth Godin books or like Agile Uprising podcast, things like that. And, and somehow every single time, whatever the message is in the book or the podcast, it resonates for that day for me. It, there's something in it that becomes useful to me for that day. So I start my day out with that in my toolbox. Wow, that is, that is a great suggestion, Kristen. And you know, I think I'll probably start doing that myself. That's, that's wonderful. One of, one of the things that keeps me afloat, just not only in my work life, but also in my personal life, is I, I have this, this mantra, but really an affirmation that I find joy in all moments of my life. And what I found in, in really living in that way is no matter what the adverse situation is, no matter what the circumstance is, I can always find joy in it, whether it's something that I'm learning, it's something that I'm becoming more aware of, that brings me joy because I'm a constant learner and that's what I get out of it. So find joy. That's all, all great stuff. Yeah. I I actually will reflect on a few of the tips that, that I have, um, and they came out of podcasts. A, a few are, are leadership ones that I listen to. Um, Brian Buffini is one of them. Jocko Willinks, another one, and another one, I think it's called Motivate. And I listen to some of these leaders, and, and they interview people like Zig Ziglar, Tony Robbins, Lou Holtz. And one of the things that I heard was things get so busy in the world around you and you can get caught up doing so many things. It's like whip limits of the brain, right? So one of the things that I have is an acronym called WIN. And I have to use this in my personal life too. And that's what's important now. So if there is a goal that we have to achieve or I have to achieve or the team has to achieve, and we get off track or we run down a rabbit hole, I have to stop and go win. What's important now? And I may not be doing the right thing at the moment or having the team focus on the right thing and I gotta re-gear my brain to get back to focusing on what the most important thing should be now. And then a second thing that came out of a podcast for just decision-making is, is the power of any situation, whether the good, the bad, or the ugly, you're in total control. And I think we tend to lose touch with that because we like to externalize and immediately cast blame and say, it's someone else's fault. But we always have the ability to control the situation. We just overlook it. So there's three decisions that any one person can make. I could change it, which you could try really hard. And you got to give it your best effort. So if that's your first step is to change it, well, then you got to go all in and, and try to change it. Then you're left with, I can live, I'm just going to live with this, right? I can't change it. So I'm going to live with it. And the advice I would 
put theirs, if you're going to live with it, put your mindset in a place that you've come to grips with the fact that you've accepted reality. It's not going to change. And I can't let this get to me. I can't let this get me down. So if I'm going to live with it, I got to find the happiest way that I can live with it. And we do that in, in relationships. We do that in business. We even do that with our kids, you know, if, we, if we're parents. And then the third situation that you have in your arsenal at the end of the day, and this applies to your personal life as well as business life, is you can leave it. So I've tried. And sometimes if you leave something, it doesn't mean you're a quitter. You always hear that, well, you're a quitter if you just stop that. No, if you choose to leave it, sometimes you're sending a message that, look, I'm out, I'm, I'm taking a stand and, and I'm done, or I'm impaling myself on the sword so that I could hopefully spare other people by, by making a statement. Those are just uh, two of the things that I, I've actually been able to glean from podcasts. Do you have another yeah. one, Kristen? I was gonna say on the last one you were talking about, I know, so there may be times where you're not sure, right? Like, like I, don't, I feel like I wanna leave it, but, but that's a big commitment, right? To, to, and I have financial responsibilities and I have all of these things. And I think also giving yourself the space to figure out how you're going to react to it, right? And while doing that, figure out, is there something I can do that's productive here that helps me, you know, like be agile, right? That helps me learn a little bit more about what my answer is. I know I was in an organization that actually it was the same organization I was talking about before, very top down, command and control we were doing safe. When we did PI planning, it was very um, not what PI planning is supposed to be. And, I, and I, it, I struggled. I really struggled. I was like, I'm back in waterfall world. And this is, this is not what I signed up for. This is, if I look at my job description, this is not what I signed up for. And then I, I asked about participating a little bit in the prep for the PI planning. And I got my foot in the door. I helped a little bit with the first one. And then the next one, I got to do a little bit more. And I actually got to see that I was impacting things. Was it, was it massive impacts? But it was an impact and it started changing people's minds. And that gave me the wherewithal to know that, you know what? I think I want to hang around here for a little bit more. Um, so I think giving ourselves the, the space to, to arrive at those conclusions instead of deciding right now, I have to decide it's one of these three things. I don't know if Lori, if you wanted to add. That's, that's a very good point. Yeah, for sure. You know, I think as you were saying earlier, Jeff, 90% of the, the engagements we walk into and nothing is going to be perfect. And, and in fact, you know, really there is no agile utopia, but knowing that we can go in and even make the smallest of change, e even if we can affect one person's life for the better, you know, I, I think that becomes worth it for me anyway, but you know, you can't eat that elephant all at once. You have to eat it spoon by spoon. And you know, what you're saying, Kristen, is, is it right on target with how I operate? You know, I start with a person, you know, I start with a small team and I build from there and it's, it's all about building those relationships and gaining their trust and, you know, trying to stay positive through the whole thing, knowing that, you know, you're there to, to make the change. And, you know, some people call that rocking the boat. I don't know that I've ever been in a boat that hasn't been rocking. So <laughs> I'm kind of, I'm kind of used to the feeling now. <laughs> yeah. One, one bit at a time. Absolutely. I had an old boss that, that used to say, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? And, and, a, and another guy that we're going to have on coaching agile journeys real soon, Bob Woods, he, He's the one that instilled in me that smooth seas never made a skilled sailor. So the boat, the boat will be rocking. There's just a, another couple positive things to touch on. And I personally believe, and the other thing that keeps my mindset right is when I start to become too much of an individual and the things get bad and I see it wearing on other people, I have to go, I'm in it for them. I'm building, I'm going to do whatever I could do to help make this situation better for everyone around me. How can I, you know, even if it's dealing with somebody that's very difficult or a difficult boss, I'm going to try and build a relationship there. There's the mafia saying, you know, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. And how can I forge a relationship with this person? Because if I could start to build trust with somebody that maybe a lot of other people don't like, 
one, let's not perceive me as being the brown noser, but what I'm really trying to do is help the team out by building that relationship. Because if I get an open door where this person confides in me or has a little bit of trust and I may be able to convince or influence to do the right thing, then we'll start moving the ball in the right direction. So that's, that's just another piece of advice I have. I feel like you're inside my head right now because you <laughs> just gave me another segue. So, so I've, you know, read uh, the difficult conversations, whatever that crucial conversations I've read negotiating books, all these, and they have great input, like as far as trying to find the similar goal that you have so you can, so you can get together, right? Like all of us have somebody that we're working with that when we see the meeting show up on the calendar that we have to meet with them, the first reaction is not joyous, <laughs> right? All of us have somebody like that, right? Um, and I've, I, in those situations, I do try to find that same goal or whatever, but, but the toolbox, the, the, uh, the little tidbit I was going to share from the book I'm reading, which the book is called Prime to Perform, and it's about total motivation, is actually quite interesting. But they go in a lot to fundamental attribution error, right? And that's the thing where you, you blame a person's character for their behavior in your head, right? It's like a human bias. So they go into this very deeply, which I'm not going to get into all the science of it. But they were saying one of the really great ways to combat that is when you feel yourself pegging a character flaw as the reason for somebody's behavior, stop and try to imagine a list of five reasons that have nothing to do with their character that could justify the behavior, right? Maybe they think this, maybe this just happened in their life or something like that to allow you to kind of like step back and then have a more productive conversation with them. And I feel like that goes a long way to what you were saying, Jeff, like building those relationships, but also you're leading by example, right? So, so people are going to hear those things and you're sort of demonstrating that more collaborative behavior. And I, I think that's very powerful. I, I love that, Kristen. Yeah, I, I think that that could go not only in your work life, but in your, in your personal life as well. That's really powerful. Thanks yeah. for that. So do you have any other tools, Lori, that, that you like to use or to keep, to keep your mind fresh and stay positive? Well, one of the things that really, really charges me up um, is meeting with my Coaching Agile Journeys co-hosts. Um, <laughs> I, and I seriously mean that. Find, find a group of people that, that you can talk with and share things with and that are positive and, you know, not just complainers but people who, who really have your best interest at heart and can help you along in, in your own journey. Um, I, I love the fact that I have you guys to, to talk to whenever I need. So I encourage everybody to have that kind of relationship out there, especially if you're a full-time coach in the slog, or you could just go get a pedicure or a massage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Be stress. <laughs> really. Absolutely. Take your Self mind off. Self of care is important. <laughs> Don't drink too much. You know? like, <laughs> I, I actually had that as as another thing. Is far too often do we like as agile coaches? So uh, they, they need a coach. You know, everybody needs a coach. Michael Phelps needs a coach, right? Like some of the best professional athletes need coaches and. And I think that could be often too overlooked. So if you want to make yourself better, confide in someone. Have, have that professional confidant that's not going to tell you what you want to hear, but what you need to hear and encourage you to be a better person or somebody that you can, how do I fix this? Like if my car is falling apart, I'm not going to go to a florist to get advice for my car. You know, I want to go get a good mechanic. Well, for my brain, I want to get a good coach and somebody that's going to help make my brain more solid. And, and I've actually been able to find, I, I lean on Heidi a lot. I've, I've called Heidi Same. many a times and she's a good one. And then of course, you know, just the conversations we have at coaching agile journeys between, between us kind of gives me a fresh perspective. And, and I really find a sense of community, you guys being able to help me out and, and any chance I can to help you guys out. 
So I, that was mine. Get a coach or a good professional confidant that you could trust. Mm -hmm. I think one other one I would add is um, being present. So, so I work with distributed teams, right? I work from home. Um, so we're not sitting in a room, but we have a Slack room. A lot of times it feels like we're sitting in a room because there's chatter there. Or when I'm in meetings with them, if I'm really focused on whatever the thing is I'm trying to teach them or whatever the, the goal is of the meeting, I might miss those things that I totally geek out on. Like when they actually, so yesterday, <laughs> one of the guys on, on my team was explaining some stuff to everybody about an upcoming feature and nobody was paying attention, right? So he's going on and on and on for a couple of minutes. Nobody's paying attention. And all of a sudden he goes, so I feel like I'm talking to myself and it's quiet. <laughs> and then he goes, so is anybody paying attention to me? And one person goes, I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> he goes, I, I don't think this is the best use of our time, right? I, I feel like there's a better way we could do this. I'm totally geeking out. I'm like, this, this is why we do what we do, right? Is so that, that the teams own their process and they own valuing their time and, and eliminating waste, right? And here he did it. And if I was so focused on making sure that meeting went well and everything, I would have jumped in way before that and said, hey, who's listening? Why aren't we doing, you know, but letting it happen, not only allowed him to take that role, that leadership role, but I got to geek out <laughs> and it made me love my job that much more. That's, that's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, somebody cool. once told me just because you're present doesn't mean you're present, mm -hmm. it's true. you know? Or, or an old saying, the light's on, but nobody's home, right? Yeah. So if you're there, you know, live in, live in the moment. Well, I, I don't want to take us, you know, too far down the path, and we're going to have a whole nother segment, and this has just been a, a great time being able to chat with both of you. I want to wrap this show up so people could kind of digest it and keep the segment small. So I'll ask from each of you as we part ways if you could give the listeners for their week ahead some sort of positive word of encouragement that, that could help them in this journey this week. Go ahead, Kristen. Um, I would say, I guess it's, it is that be present, right? It's the take a moment, give yourself a moment to observe and, and you'll see the change that you are making, right? That's what I'd say. That's a good one. Lori? Yeah, uh, for me, I, I'm going to have to go back to joy. Find joy in all moments of your life, even in the bad ones. So yeah, two good ones. And my, mine's going to be going back to kind of what you said, Kristen, and, and not only building a relationship with someone that you may find difficult, but really trying to understand that somebody may be having a bad day or somebody may be going through a personal struggle or somebody may not be seeing things clearly. There may be a different reason why somebody is in the position that they're in. So if you could find any way in your power to relate or give a benefit of the doubt or make that connection with that person or even show that person you care in some way, maybe that's exactly what they need. You're now opening up a door to possibly make some positive progress and and really start to make some momentum for your team. Not for you, but for your team. And that's, that's about getting you right and breathing that fresh oxygen. So I do wanna say one more thing. We have Twitter. I would say connect with me personally, but I'm really bad with Twitter. But we have Coaching Agile Joe is our Twitter. And we have a really great leader that has stepped up and is rocking it. Thank you so much, Kristen, for doing that. Twitter and I, we're, we're going we're gonna to learn to be friends here. <laughs> <laughs> you're killing it. And, and if you're not following Coaching Agile Joe, she's retweeting, finding all kind of good things, all kind of great statements, quotes. I love it. Keep it up. That, that's really cool. So you could tweet back to us and say hi to Kristen through, through there. So Kristen, is there any other way that the audience could connect with you? Sure. Um, I am on Twitter also, uh, still trying to be friends. And my handle is at Agile Coach Chris, and it's C-R-I-S. And Lori, I, I didn't touch on that last time. Is there any way that our audience can connect with you personally? Well, I guess I need to break out my old Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> Really, uh, just uh, I think there's a, a way to message on our website, 
Did, did we just discover that the other day? Yeah, sorry yeah. guys. So we can we can connect that way or just show up to one of the sessions and start talking to me. Well, thanks to the both of you for being here late at night and, and doing this podcast. It's really fun. I, I love having a time to, to be able to explore some of these topics and hopefully, you know, some of our listeners find some benefit to this and stay tuned for part two of this series. Thanks everybody. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. I'll leave you with one more truthfully inspiring John Gordon quote. No matter what anyone says, just show up and do the work. If they praise you, show up and do the work. If they criticize you, show up and do the work. If no one even notices you, just show up and do the work. Just keep showing up. Doing great work and leading the way. Lead with passion. Fuel up with optimism. Have faith. Power up with love. Maintain hope. Be stubborn. Fight the good fight. Refuse to give up. Ignore the critics. Believe in the impossible. Show up. Do the work. That is just awesome. That is insane. I love it. Anyway, maybe you have some tips to share. We'd love to hear it. So please tweet us or reach out to us personally. If you were able to use something that we've shared here today and have a success story, we'd love to hear that. More importantly, if you're open to us sharing it here with the Agile public, that would be great too. People love hearing a good success story. So join us next week for part two, where we'll explore the soft skills and emotional intelligence you harness. Thanks for joining us here at Open to Be Agile, the podcast. Have a great week ahead. To learn more or to contact us, visit www.coachingagilejourneys.com.